play uh, on the internet several years ago, especially around a certain message board that you and I used to frequent. Um, Bosch Nigger was real popular because it had a great theme song. Um, I was about to say only because of the name probably, but okay. No, no, the, the theme song was amazing. He's the boss. Oh yes, he's the boss. But yeah, uh, the big black guy, Frost, he, he was the titular boss nigger of the piece and also with Spear Chucker Jones and Mash so I know him but not Sex Machine I've only ever seen as Sex Machine well that's because he's mostly a special effects guy mm. and he's mostly involved with you know things like the original Friday the 13th alright the fourth Friday the 13th which is rated as the best one when it comes to fucking practical gore effects Night of the Living Dead from Dust Till Dawn he did that um, Django Unchained, Machete, Planet Terror. So, so I was gonna, when you started saying he was known as a special effects guy, I was like, what? And you're going to tell me that Rodriguez loves his work? And then you named all the films that Rodriguez has worked on. Basically, yes, but he's done so much more than but that as well. Has he, got, has he got an acting career as well, though? Because does have small roles, but because he's so good, the mostly bits like Sex Machine. They're never like him in like a real big role. He's always no, no, like I don't expect him to be a leading man, but like, but he he's he's quite brilliant as Sex Machine. He's got all these weird little. He seems very natural. Like he's got like all these cool little mannerisms. I mean, I mean the first. I, mean, I the first... fucking love him in that film, and I was hoping I would find more about him, but he... no, very very little. Surprising. Uh, speaking about films that you know are horrible, like From Dust Till Dawn, and the person you're with doesn't, friend of the show, friend of mine, um, mm-hmm. we we ha- used to have like movie nights a couple of times every couple of weeks, and we would both pick a film in roughly the same category. So like, we'll do one good, and we'll do one less than good. Like, oh, okay. we'll do one with evil doctors. Okay, here's one about Dr. Giggles, which is a mid-90s, very shit slasher film where the guy kills people with doctor implements. I'm 99% sure I've seen Dr. Giggles. <laughs> it's pretty good because... Uh, pretty good. It's yeah, It's got a gimmick and it works. Like I said, slasher films with gimmicks work for me. And then we watched Vincent Price, Dr... Dr. Phoebes. Dr. Phoebes, that's it. The oh, abominable Dr. Best. Phoebes. Oh, the best. And that's so good. And then one day, we were like, oh, let's do zombie films. Okay, cool. And I'm like, you pick the good one, and I'll pick a somewhat one of less repute. You look fine. 28 Days Later. I'm like, fine, I've seen that before, but that's a great film. Great director, Danny Boyle. I'll gladly watch that with you. Uh, You'll watch uh, with me uh, instead, uh, as my... Entry for this is Brain Dead. I much prefer Brain Dead at 28 Days Later. Slash. Oh, 28 Days Later is a solid film, but. Oh, I don't I like it. That's alright. But Bra- Brain Dead. I love Brain Dead. Though. I made him watch Brain Dead Dead Alive. Know, yeah. And it was like. I, lo- I love. I, do, I know what you're going to say. Because I love springing it on people. As it well. was about half an hour in, and then I'm like, I'm not quite sure I actually told him about like the details of the film. Like, I told you Peter Jackson directed this. Yeah, yeah, like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Peter Jackson directed this. Like, did I tell you that this is probably or still the record holder for the most bloody film of all time? See, I'm, I prefer to do it the other way. I like to put it on and, like, let it get to the... Not quite lawnmower part, but, you know, we're getting there and be like... You know, mate, this, don't you? The fucking Lord of the Rings guy. Uh, and like, people are like, fuck off. Like, nah, seriously. <laughs> this is what he got famous for. I told him, like, oh, this is the most bloody film of all time. It's like, oh, you're pretty much wrong there, but just I keep watching. Mean... And then everything in the fucking house happens. I'm like, oh, this is so great. And he looks at me, he's like, I'm, I'll have to write about this. <laughs> <laughs> he, because he keeps up a blog because he writes books 
And then he told me, like, well, that blog post I made about Brain Dead, it's the most visited blog post I've ever made. And Brain Dead is so good. It's so it's great. shit, but Brain it's Dead. so Bra- good. Bra- Brain Dead's such a weird film because I think it's, you know, when you think of video nasties. Yes. And there's, there's something like, oh, well, they're inherently shit. But Brain Dead seems to. Egg, it, 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 it almost crystallizes and exemplifies that genre so completely that it, it kind of gains value from it. It, it, it almost it, it's because it, Evil Dead does a similar thing, but that's different again because I think that is just like a seminal horror film. Where, whereas Brain Dead, it is just it, it, it takes video nasties to such an extreme that it's like okay, now 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 you've done something so ridiculously over the top and so absurd. That it's become art. There's, now. there's only a few times in the film where I was like, okay, this is unnerving. Whereas the rest was just so fucking over the top, I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, no, you, you absolutely revel in it. And it, it is almost like a celebration of the entire genre. Exactly. Like, like Yeah, and like I, I, that's why I think it, it's, it's kind of... I think it stands alongside the Evil Dead... But it's separate because there are bits in the Evil Dead where you're like, well, fucking. They're similar, that. but not really. Especially, especially Evil Dead Two. Evil Dead Two, the because I mean, because again, because Evil Dead does revel in it, uh, and it gets obviously stupider the longer it goes on. Then we reach Army of Darkness, where we're in a different genre entirely, and it's actually the best one. But um, Evil Dead Two, like there is bits in that where it's like, okay, this is just off the wall now, and it loves it. But then. There is bit in there where you're going. Oh, actually, this is a bit weird. But brain dead, you you never get that feeling of you know like the creeping kind of. Oh, I don't like it. The you unnerving never get that in bit. Brain dead. There's only there's only two moments in that film that bother me a bit. It's the when the uncle uh, shows up as a zombie and he's got the entire spine sticking out of him. All right. So you got like a big fat bloke, like six foot something tall, a spine out of his body and then the head on top of that that just looks so wrong to me yeah i guess, I guess just because like weird alien visuals i guess that's that's great design that's the only bit that makes me go like ah oh, ew that's gross I, I was gonna is brain dead the one where they killed the turtle i don't think there's a turtle oh, in was brain that, dead was that, that cannibal holocaust that. that's cannibal holocaust i think yeah yeah and the last bit in um brain dead where the mother zombie puts her son in a womb. I can say, like... It's... Okay, it's... It's so fucking over the top, but that's the... It, it did make me go, like... No, it's fucking gross. Ew. Ew. <laughs> no, it, it is... I mean, the living intestines I have no problems with, but, you know, being put can... inside a 12-foot-tall giant monster zombie... <laughs> Join the YouTube system. No, please don't. Well, I can see how. I can see how that would be a threshold, but I don't know. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I loved it. Mind you, Peter Jackson's best film, I think, is in between The Lord of the Rings and Brain Dead. Mm-hmm. It's The Frightness. I've not seen The Frightness. Oh my god, it's on, you have to. Do you know to. what? It's, it's, it's not like, you know, when people say, oh, it's on the list. I've got a literal list of films. And the frightness is on there. You have a literal list, and the frightness I've is on there. I've an actual literal, literal list, yeah. The films that I've been meaning to watch, yeah. Please the watch the frightness, please. The frightness is on it's there. Uh, Michael J. Fox before he stopped being charming as Michael J. Fox. Did he ever stop being charming as Michael J. Fox? No, but he had. He was charming as Helen Scrubs. He was charming, yeah, well, he just had more issues later on in his life, probably. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Um, it has uh, Jeffrey Combs from the Reanimator. Oh, okay, all right. Now, now, now you're speaking my language. It has, if I'm not mistaken, Gary Busey's brother. <laughs> I I thought it was the actor when I was younger. I thought this was the actor that played Biff in Back to the Future, but it's such oh a God. one-on-one. It's basically the same role, and it has um, John Astin, Austin. The guy who played Gomez Adams in the old TV series. Oh, okay, all right. It has famous black comedian guy who is still alive. He was in Brooklyn Nine Nine. Uh, anyway, he's good. Uh, and it has Drill Sergeant from Full Metal Jacket. 
Oh, Arlie Ermy. He's in it as well. The leader of the Toy Soldiers from Toy Story. Wasn't that Tommy Lee Jones? Nope. It was Arlie Ermy. Oh, Toy Soldiers. Sorry. You're the... thinking of uh, Small Soldiers. Small Soldiers. Sorry, you said Which Toy was... Soldiers. Yeah, the Toy Soldiers from Toy Story. So, yeah, um, without spoiling anything, The Frighteners is about somebody who had a near-death experience, can see ghosts, but then the Grim Reaper starts killing people, and he's the only one can see it. And it's like somewhat like a slasher, but this not sounds really. Like, um, good, f- good flatliners. The film. Yeah, it sounds like a good version. It is of that. pretty much a better version of that. Because... Actually, no, actually, no, I, I like the original. Have you seen the trailer? Oh, it just looks so shit. Oh, the fuck I've, have you seen the trailers for Geo Storm? For who? Geo Storm. Yeah, I'm not sure what to make of it. That looks like shit. I don't know. You know, I think I might like it. Oh, that's awful. I d- well, I don't know if I just like, you know, the cool satellite idea. Because that's cool, isn't it? That is a cool... That's big... a cool idea, but it looks yeah. like... And I don't know if if I'm just being blown away by that idea and that visual to the point where... Because, because you know, the bit later on where it's like, we're going to kidnap the president? And then he's like, uh, you know, the, the big cast, and he's like, oh, marry her. Like, that is shit, in it? That is rubbish. That is shite, in it? I'm Fucking guessing that you've, so I'm guessing that you've seen this trailer when you've been to see it, the same that I did. No, I saw it last week when I saw um, Mother? Kingsman 2. Yeah. Oh, how was Kingsman 2? I quite like Kingsman 2. All right. Was it you that I mentioned that I'd heard a review that gave it minor stars? I can see why people... Oh, wait, no, might... you've reviewed Kingsman 2. Oh, shit. I didn't... I, yeah, all right. Cut this bit out. I've got to watch that video. I apologise. I did say I was going to watch it and I forgot. Well, the video I uploaded. Yes. There's no spoilers in that, so you can watch it. Oh, no, I was going to say, since we're editing, can I go and piss? Okay, fine. (laughs) Hello? Am I first back? I am, I can hear I can hear you approaching now, I can hear you. I can hear you walking up. Feet slapping along the floor. Clock slippers. <laughs> I can I can hear you fucking clip clopping along. My uh my sister's my girlfriend's sister and her boyfriend went to Amsterdam and they brought back fucking matching clog slippers. Well they both have the same pair. No no, one's got like a yellow pair and one's got a brown pair. But they're the same, you know. Design quite makes me regret getting these now. <laughs> I'm pretty uh, the thing is, as well, I'm pretty sure I saw the pair that they've got in Primark. <laughs> I don't know, I don't very often go to Primark. Do you have Primark in the Netherlands? Yeah, a couple. Yeah, there, there's one in um, in my current hometown. Oh, thought it was exclusively uh, a UK thing. I think the formula of buying lots of cheap. Tea- Cheap clothes, wherever the fuck they may come from, and then selling. Hello. Am I first back? I am. I can hear. I can hear you approaching now. I can hear you. I can hear you walking up. Feet slapping along the floor. Clock slippers. <laughs> I can. I can hear you fucking clip clopping along. My uh, my sister's my girlfriend's sister and her boyfriend went to Amsterdam and they. Brought back fucking matching clog slippers. Well, they both have the same pair. No, no, one's got like a yellow pair and one's got a brown pair. But they're the same, you know, design. Quite makes me regret getting these now. <laughs> I'm pretty, uh, The thing is, as well, I'm pretty sure I saw the pair that they've got in Primark. <laughs> I don't know, I don't very often go to Primark. Do you have Primark in the Netherlands? Yeah, a couple. Yeah. Uh, there's one in... Um, in my current hometown. Oh, thought it was exclusively uh, a UK thing. I think the formula of buying lots of cheap, cheap clothes, wherever the fuck they may come from, and then selling them to other Idiot. people for cheap is quite universal. So No, that is, but I just thought the brand itself of primary market. But no, I mean, you know, obviously buying produce from Indian sweatshops en masse for pence. It's there's definitely one in Amsterdam and at least three others I know of. So yeah, it's okay over here, I suppose. And not like England where you can't live in a city without one. But without a Primark? Yeah. 
Oh no, you've got to have a, you've got to have a big Primark. I mean, where, where else are you going to buy, your, you know, pants and socks? Oh well, yeah, that's what I mean. I usually buy all my clothes online anyway because I can't be asked. Uh, do you know, I, I still like going down, having a look, having a try on. I like all that. I quite, I'm, I, I, I do, yeah, I find I'm quite unique in the male, male of the species. All my mates are all the same. I hate hate the idea of going clothes. I love going clothes shopping, me. Even the missus, the missus can't stand going clothes shopping. I love it. Ah, weird. I, I, yeah, I proper, I proper love it. I love. Going I usually down. go like to places where they have people that help you with the sizes because I'm a quite big, hefty bloke, and they go like, "Yeah, these are the sizes that will fit you." I'm like, "I'll fit one." I'm like, so are these all the same sizes then? Yes. If you fit this one, you'll fit that one. I'm like, fine. I'll have this shirt, this shirt, this shirt, that polo, and those pants. Thank you very much. Mm. And I won't yeah. be back for another year or so. <laughs> My season all worn out. Not because, not because I hate shopping. Because I just hate the tedious. Like I'll fit on one pair, and then I'll fit on another, and then I'll fit on another. Yeah, no, I can see that. I can see that. But I have I mean, attention deficit something something disorder. No, I don't think it's. I don't. Think it, I don't think it's even that. I think people do just hate the like the fact that if you, if you're a size whatever, then you should like you should be a size whatever across the board. But oh no, this designer thinks you're a size, uh, and it's like oh you want up or down. Did with this you one. know like, there's yeah, a conspiracy like, yeah, recently fucking... where they are actually making the smaller sizes bigger so that people are like oh. I'm an M now. Oh, I'll just buy a couple of more. I'm an M now. Hooray! Well, I'll tell you for free. As somebody as I was saying, I'm trying to drop a few pounds. That hasn't reached fucking top man yet. <laughs> they, they, they haven't got that fucking memo. Cle- clearly, they're not doing the secret handshake right. <laughs> my, my t-shirts are just getting smaller and smaller. I've never been to a top man. No, I, I only I bought I buy my jeans from Top Man. Um, I used to I used to buy shoes from Top Man, but they don't last five minutes. This is, like I, I don't, I'm not a big one for spending loads of money on clothes, but I think shoes and coats you can't skimp. You, you've got to pay the big bucks. Shoes because... and coats are fucking important because I you, always you get a some... nice coat and I always get yeah. good shoes. You need something that looks nice and feels nice and is hard wet. That's the thing is that you can because if you've got a top man, you can get a nice coat, you can get a nice pair of shoes, and they'll look nice and they'll feel nice, but they'll last you about three weeks. You've got to buy something that looks nice, feels nice, and it's going to last you. Because you, you don't want to be shut. Because it's false economy. Like, I used to go down Top Man, and I used to buy a pair of shoes. I, I used to buy, like, three pair of shoes from Top Man every year, right, for, like, 20 quid a go. I could have bought one 60 quid pair of shoes, you know, and that would have lasted me longer. I've I didn't. one I'm pair idiot. of, like, boot-like shoes five years ago, and they still fit. They're still, the outside yeah. is still good. The inside is a little bit naff. But, you know, they're still fucking good. And that's the kind of stuff you want. It's actually a Discworld-ism from um, Captain Samuel Vines. Like, rich people can afford to buy one pair of good shoes. Poor people have to buy 20 a year, something like that. And the rich people can actually last longer than the 20 times you have to buy the one pair. And the poor people will stay poor because they have to buy new shoes or... Yeah, it's 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 total false economy. I love, but as a side note, Vimes, top man, love Vimes. Samuel Vimes is fantastic. So yeah, I always splash a little bit on shoes and coats. Yeah, shoes and coats. I'm I'm due a coat this. Week. I haven't bought a coat for three years. Last year I was really struggling. I was wearing like my my jumper and then my leather. Sorry, a jumper over a tracksuit top and then a leather jacket over that. Because I don't have a bit, I don't have a big coat at the minute, and I was having a fucking multi-layer, and it was yeah, it was beautiful. I, I need to I need to buy a big winter coat this year. I need to spend like I don't need, about what one about one fifty to two hundred. This is the fashion part of the TLDR podcast. I'm not usually into fashion very much, but I'll freely admit when you have to buy a nice pair of shoes and a nice coat. Yeah, this is what I mean. Like this is this is a coat is always like. a part of your first impression. I mean. You can wear shit underneath, but if you have a nice coat, people yep. are like, oh, yes. damn, look at that nice coat. I'm like, yeah, it is, isn't it? No, like, my t-shirts are exclusively, and I mean exclusively, wrestling merchandise. That is that is, that is how classy a dresser I am, but shoes and coats, I will not 
compromise because you can't you can't afford it you can't afford to compromise when it comes to shoes and coats because that's the kind of because that ain't fashion that shit that's keeping you alive when you go out into the wilds and it's freezing and it's wet you need stuff that's gonna fucking keep the weather out damn right anyway watch the frightness <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. I watch. Fr- it is on. It's on the. Uh, it's on the list. It's on the list. It's actually on the list above the Tommy Knockers. Uh, have you, you've seen? The, oh no, you've not seen the. You've read the Tommy. Mm, yes. No, I haven't read the Tommy. I haven't read it either. This is the thing. Oh. Yeah. yeah. The, the Tommy Knockers is about like the boogeyman, isn't the it? The alien craft that crashes and starts to brainwash everyone. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah. It's the it's the one Spielberg. Uh, Spielberg. King, so many Stevens. It's the one King one that escaped me. Oh, speaking of Stephen King and previous uh, TLDR topics, have you heard the big business that it has been doing? It is the most um, lucrative Hollywood grossing. horror film since The Exorcist. Oh, I heard today it is the highest grossing horror film of all time. Yeah, well, The Exorcist was number one before that. It could be if we factor in inflation that the Exorcist would actually kick its ass because, you know. I don't think they've yeah. done that math, but probably. I don't think they've considered the Sixth Sense either, which is like a little bit in between. Have they not? Because I, I would have. Because the Sixth would've... Sense has made more money, but I'm not quite sure everybody mm, yeah. considers that a horror story, just like the fact <sighs> it features <sighs> mutilated ghosts. What else do you consider it? I think it's a horror, isn't it? Isn't it? I think so. Isn't it? Like, I don't think it I, is. I it's not, it's not a psychological thriller. It's a, it's it's a straight horror movie. I mean, it's not trying to fucking fuck you up, but it does show you like this little kid is living with a constant world if, with look, people if, with if, no if, faces if, and burnt off scalps and. If if you're doing a movie where the entire plot is look, ghosts are real. That's a horror film. Unless it is the film Ghost Ghost. <laughs> or Casper. Eric Idle was in Casper. Was he? Who did he play? He was the henchman to the evil villainess. Wasn't, wait, weren't the evil villains the Villainess? I don't remember I don't remember the female villain. I just remember his uncles. His uncles were Uncles were the bad guys, but they're yeah. not really bad guys. They were just like laddie like ghosts. Spirits. Yeah, yeah. And then you have the villainess who wants to find this hidden treasure in this house. In the big house. I don't know. Do you know what? I won't lie to you. The only bit I remember from the entirety of that film is the bit where they hire somebody to come and exercise the ghost. And it's and Dan Aykroyd. Goes, oh, who, who are you going to call? And he goes, somebody else. It's so weird. <laughs> Everybody in the pythons that Eric Idle seems to have done like the most attempts at making it out of the pythons. But he's been the like aside from Graham Chapman, who's quite dead, quite dead, the least successful. I'd, I'd well, I suppose you could say because Terry Jones never tried. Terry Jones never tried, but when he goes like, oh, I might just do a documentary, and then he does a documentary, and that's really fucking solid. Uh, the, the thing with Idol was he's been sort of the most. As you said, like he's the one who's like applied himself the most. Like I'm going to take the roles and do stuff, but he, it never seemed to me as if he cared overly. He didn't seem precious about it. Do you know what I mean? Like he was always like Eric Idle. Yeah, it just seemed like Eric Idle's turned up to do something. Um, um, I'm not going to say John Cleese wasn't, but there's a huge gap. There's a huge gap between John Cleese and Eric Idle. Because I was going to say, what about John Cleese? Because he did Rat Race. Rat Race is an underrated movie and I'll fucking fight you over it. I was about to say Rat Race, which I actually kind of like, but you must admit it's beneath John Cleese. He's probably the best in that film because he's John Cleese. I would say Rowan Atkinson. Rowan Atkinson. It's the two British guys are the best. Although, to be fair though, Rowan Atkinson is just playing Mr. Bean. He's a race. He, he is just... he's. He's just doing Mr. Bean in that film, but with a funny Italian accent. With a funny, with with a in quotes, funny Italian accent. But 
then still, if you look at the supporting cast, we still have Whoopi Goldberg and Seth, still have Green. Seth Green and his brother, who we never hear talk because who, who, who was his brother? Brother? Who who was that guy? Because he was the, he was dead good. He was dead good, but I don't fucking know who he is. Do you, I'll tell, do you know who the best of all the supporting cast was? Um, and it's usually the case when he's on on hand. He's usually the best of the supporting cast. Uh, John, uh, what's his name? The, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he's got, got it. He's got the fat it. guy. The fat guy. John Lovitz. John Lovitz. John Lovitz. He is incredible in that race. And he, John Lovitz plays three different characters in Friends. And each of them are hilarious. I, I always thought there was two, but there's a one he plays the boss of Phoebe. No, not... Yeah, Phoebe. Uh, yes. He plays a... De- no, hang on. He plays a date. He goes on with Wraith. Rachel with Rachel. He plays the ra- ra- the funniest one he does is where he goes on a date with Rachel, and he's like, oh, "I've got such fat hands." That's and it. He's, such a, he's a proper weird dude. Yeah. Then he has an audition for Monica because he's the owner of a restaurant that Phoebe knows, but he was high beforehand. Yeah. Yes. But what's the third one then? I can't remember, but I know he plays three different characters. Unless it is only two, and I've remembered it wrong. Uh, that's I'm fine, anyway. Gonna, I, I was I'm always, not going to Google it. I don't care enough. We don't have John, to Google John that. John is amazing. I'm, I'm fine. Amazing. I'm fine with not Googling that. <laughs> John Lovett is the king of, like, shit roles that don't mean anything, but are brilliant. Like, he plays, um, the guy, you know, how familiar are you with Little Nicky? Not. Okay. Well, he, play, he plays a character in Little Nicky who, like, it's, it's our introduction to, like, the transition between when humans die who are shit, this is how they go to hell. Yeah. And he is that human. And he's this big fat guy in a tree, like spying on a woman through a window and he's all like, Oh yeah. And he gives like crank calls and all this shit. He's fucking am- he plays like this weird sleaze ball. It's so funny. John Lovett is dead good and I don't know why he's never like Yeah you-, you know all the roles that Rob Schneider got? Yeah. That should have been John Lovett that. It, they basically fulfil the same purpose, don't they? Like, you always remember really them, good. but you never really know what the fuck they were doing. Yeah, they are, oh, you know that bit part actor from that Adam Sandler film? Yeah, that's uh, him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sad. I've looked up the brother of Seth Green in uh, Rat Race. It's Vince Villiers, who is mostly known for Rat Race. Which is funny... Because it sounded as if you were pronouncing his surname the way that he would in that film. Villieux. Villieux. V-I-E-L-U-F. I don't really know how else to pronounce that. Because it, it would if, if it was Villieux. Because he's got the tongue piercing. <laughs> and he, go, he <laughs> goes, Villieux. Oh, Could be good in there. Junior is in Rat Race. Now there is a Rat Race reference. That, um... Say that again, sorry. Could be good in Junior is in Rat Race. Yes, he is. He plays the lad who somehow gets stuck on the bus full of I Love Lucy conventions. Oh, that's great. See, I think it's a great timeless film. The only thing that really dates it is they end up in a fucking Smash Mouth concert. (laughs) That's like, well, we're in the middle of the fucking 90s, so let's just drive that all the way home. Here's Smash Mouth. the The really sad thing is, don't know if it was made in the 90s. I think it might have been the mid 2000s. I think it was the 90s. I've already. Put... I, I, I hope to God it was the 90s. I already put my phone away because I don't want to be exposed to it anymore. Anyway, Rat Race is great and I will punch anybody who disagrees with I, me. I mean, that's great. You can watch it and you'll be fucking entertained. Let's, let's roll great back, though. It scores a 6.4 on IMDb, and I'll be willing to go to battle for it for at least a 7. I would say that 6.4 on IMDb is about right. That is surprisingly high. I'm so I'm don't, I'm sticking don't, with my I, I don't want I'm sticking TLDR. with my 7. I don't care. I don't want TLDR to devalue the word great. <laughs> because we never do that. Well... Let's not do it any further. In that case, <laughs> Rat Race is a surprisingly funny film. It is not great by any stretch of the imagination. It has way it's, nice it's a, in it's, it. It's, it's it's a good, easy watch. If it ever comes on on a Saturday afternoon and you're stuck for something, 
by all means, stick Rat Race on. It is actually quite funny. But great, it is not. <laughs> I always go into something with no expectations unless I go into something with high expectations. <laughs> I, I mean, I try to as well. Absolutely. Except Alien Covenant. <sighs> oh, no, you, oh, you said it now, haven't you? <laughs> so, a fre- so a friend of the show keeps bugging me to watch Alien Covenant. He oh, really right. likes it. Have you seen it? And, no, and he's been listening to all our back catalogue and that, and he's like, I listened to earlier episodes. I want you to watch Alien Covenant. And I spoke to him today in person before I came here to record this, and he said, Why don't you watch Alien Covenant in the build up to doing the show? Oh, and wait, said, hang on. Because we've done it. And now, you, and now you've done it, haven't you? You've dropped it in, you've mentioned it. You've bloody mentioned it, haven't you? I thought you meant a different friend of the show because another friend of the show has been giving me grief for saying I hated it. He's no, no, it's a, <laughs> it's a good film and so you will never get your old Ridley Scott back right. and it will be, it's okay and it's good and and uh, a third friend of the show is wrong and it's it's decent and it's better than... I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to watch it, aren't I? No. I mean, no, I, I mean, I was going to anyway. I, I intend to watch it anyway because I'm a completionist. You're oh. not going to make me watch it again, are you? No, no, no. I'm not asking you to watch it again. Oh, thank anyway. fuck. No, 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 no. I wouldn't dream of it. But I, I am going to have to watch it, aren't I? If only to say to these other people whether or not I liked it. Because if, if I can watch it and come on the... Presumably, the people that have watched it and said, actually, it's all right, and Floris was too harsh on it. Presumably, they're big fans of the franchise, as I am. If I can come on the airwaves and go, do you know what? It was okay. I am that will that will appease a part of our fan base. I'm more and... terrified you would disagree with me. I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, why would you be terrified? Because I was over. I am overly negative about it. it I don't know why. Why you ter- terrified is a strong word. I'm not going to fucking glass you like. I'm happy happy you weren't because I was lambasted by some people. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's an opinion. Yeah, well, sometimes sometimes I feel like my opinion is not always appreciated by yeah, some this people. One, this is one of the rules. I, I, know, I know who you're talking about now. This is one of the rules that I do want to establish for the TLDR podcast, though. You know, between me and you and the listener, we all, all three of us, myself, yourself, and the listener, you as well, we can all come and we can all bring our opinion. And regardless of how strong our opinion is, no one opinion is more or less valid. I I want this to be a forum where we can come and all of us together can voice opinions and even if we do disagree, let's not get let's let's not get Twitter angry. Do you know what I mean? Let's not get let's not get Facebook angry. All right. Let's all of us. If if I come and I say a film is fucking shit, even if I swear, that doesn't mean that if you like the film, you have to swear back at me. You can just say I actually quite like the film, and then I'll go to you. Tell me why. That's all. That's all I ask. That's all I ask.